Hello and welcome to Series Capades. These are two trays containing my, my own hybrids, my own propagations. Like I've said, I've got two trays here. This tray here has been sown about five months ago in October. Well, this one has been sown a, a, a month after this one. So this means, I think this was in the mid of November. It's currently the first week of March and this means that this is five months old and this is turning four in a few days. So let's have a look at their progress. So if you look at this tray here, column B has some seedlings growing. I also see a straggler from column D, D1. And according to my notes, that is Echeveria Jade Point. So this first tray here contains seeds that were not pollinated by myself. These were naturally pollinated by bees, birds, or maybe even flies. And I can see seedlings in column B. These are from the Echeveria Elegance. And from cell D1 specifically, which according to my notes is a jade point. And it's funny that I just see two of them, two seedlings. There used to be other seedlings that sprouted in the other cells, but unfortunately they died, maybe dehydration or something, because our weather's been crazy. I think they dried out last January or was it in December? And I don't think there would be any new sprouts that would come out in the next few weeks or months, because I started the germination process back in October. Now let's have a look at this second tray here. As you can see, there's lots and lots of seedlings scattered across all of the cells. Well, most of the cells. There are a few cells here that are empty. And let's have a look at my notes to see which one is which. So this is column A. And according to my notes, column A, A1 to A4 would be Echeveria agavoides and the Bella Rouge. In the case of this cross, the seed parent would be the agavoides and the pollen parent would be the Bella Rouge. What that means is that I took pollen from the Bella Rouge and placed it, transferred it onto the flowers of the agavoides. If you look closely at the seedlings, they're starting to take the shape of the agavoides. You could clearly see the sharp leaf tips and there are some markings on the end. I think that's an agavoides characteristic because you would usually see that there. Their leaves are fairly pointed, fairly acute, acuminate or acute. From the looks of things, this batch, this row of seedlings are very, what's the word I'm looking for? Healthy? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think healthy is a good way to describe them because if you have a good look at them, they're fairly plump and there's no sign that they're wrinkly or dehydrated. So, yep, very hardy. Now let's have a look at the next column, column B. And according to my notes, cells B1 and B2 has a different set of parents compared to cells B3 and B4. So let me read from my list here. So cells B1 and B2 were harvested from the colorata and the orion. The colorata tends to have a long, acute or acuminate leaf shape, much like the agavoides, only the agavoides is more pointed. And the pollen parent would be the orion, which tends to be rounded, circular, and flat. No, not flat, but a compact rosette. So it would be interesting what would turn out here. Now looking closely, there seems to be a huge size difference with the seedlings compared to column A1, for instance. The leaves are larger, wider, and I don't know, maybe even plumper. Some of the leaves are developing a red marking at the very tip, much like the previous set in column A. But another thing that I'm noticing here, specifically in cell B2, is that it seems like the markings go across both ends, both margins. So is this a sign of variegation? I don't know. We really have to wait for it to find out. But in any case, there's clearly a difference in the shape of the leaves and the size of the rosette, especially in cell B1, because in B1, not a lot of seedlings formed, which means that there's less competition in space. In B2, there's lots and lots of seedlings and they're competing in the space, which has probably stunted the growth of some of them. Now onto the next set, B3 and B4. According to my notes, B3 and B4 contains seeds from a cross of Pachyveria bea and Echeveria Lola. Now this is really interesting because the resulting plant here is not an Echeveria but a Pachyveria. The Bea tends to have long 
leaves, long slender leaves, while the Lola tends to have short, stubby, and mucronate shaped leaves. So it would be interesting to see what happens when they grow, because it would be a tug of war between having long leaves and short, pointy leaves. From what I can see right now, I think the Lola is winning, but let's give it some time. Let's see what happens as it grows. The next group would be Column C, and according to my notes, I sowed the same type of seed, the same hybrid on cell C, C1 to C4. Cell C1 to C4 contains hybrids based on a cross of Echeveria mira and Echeveria bluebird. The mira is a loose Agavoides hybrid. It's not it's not a pure Agavoides, but it still tends to have that characteristic Agavoides shape, you know, where it, the leaves are slender and it goes to a point. It tapers and forms a sharp edge. Well, the bluebird, on the other hand, looks a lot more like the colorata, only a lot denser and a lot thinner leaves. So I'm expecting that there would be some sharpness, sharp tips. Now looking at it closely, I can see that the larger leaves are forming sharp tips. There's a protrusion here, but I can't say for sure which parent it got it from. <laughs> I forgot to mention this, but apparently I used the same seeds on column D. And there's a couple, there's a few sprouts here, three, three of them. And they look a bit like column C, so it's fair to assume that they, they have the same parents. Now, this last two columns here, E and F, according to my notes, I used the same parents for these. I used an Echeveria Bella Rouge as the seed parent and the Echeveria Romeo as a pollen parent. This means that I took pollen from the Romeo and transferred it onto the Bella Rouge. Now, looking at the cells, there's some, there's several sprouts here, several seedlings, and overall, the success rate was low, the germination rate, rather. And the seedlings that are coming out are tending to have sharp tipped leaves. Might be the Agavoides influence, but it's too early to tell because they're still a lot smaller compared to the others here. I guess these are late germinators. Because in fact, I'm looking at this right now and in cell F2, there's a tiny seedling that has just sprouted, apparently. So there might still be a chance that new sprouts would come out in the next few days, but it's a matter of luck. Having seen these results, five months, four months, I think that my own, my own hybrids are doing a lot better than the ones that I just harvested from, from the flowers. This is giving me some sort of confidence with trying out more complex hybrids. I might start playing with freely plants. I'm just waiting for some of them to finish blooming so I could play around with the pollen. I think that would be the next frontier in my hybridization journey. So, until the next update, bye.